Okay, so today we are going to talk about rheumatoid arthritis. First of all, we will talk about pathology of this disease. Then we will talk about all the investigations, labs and x-rays. After that, we will talk in detail about the treatment protocol of rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is basically an autoimmune disease that causes destruction of the joints. Body's immune system destroys its own joints. It is an inflammatory condition that causes destruction of the joints. Since it is an inflammatory condition, there will be an inflammatory mediators which will be causing this destruction. Inflammatory mediators produced by the immune system like TNF-alpha, IL-1, IL-6 are the most important mediators that cause rheumatoid arthritis that mediate this disease. The cause of rheumatoid arthritis is unknown, but there is an association with certain things like it is more commonly found in females. It is three times more common in females as compared to males. It is found to be associated with smoking and it is also found to be associated with certain infections like mycoplasma and other atypical bacteria. In the clinical presentation of rheumatoid arthritis, for diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis, you need four things. You need four points out of the following. The patient should have morning stiffness, which is greater than one hour for at least six weeks. It should be greater than one hour. As we discussed in our video in osteoarthritis, that osteoarthritis also has morning stiffness, but the differentiating factor is that osteoarthritis has less than one hour morning stiffness. In osteoarthritis, morning stiffness is for 20 to 30 minutes. In rheumatoid arthritis, the morning stiffness is classical and it is for greater than one hour. It causes swelling of wrist, metacarpophalangeal joint, proximal interphalangeal joint for six weeks. This is metacarpophalangeal joint. This is proximal interphalangeal joint. And one very important thing is that it spares distal interphalangeal joint. If the patient is also having disease in the distal interphalangeal joint, you should think about other causes, other diseases, other than rheumatoid arthritis, because rheumatoid arthritis spares distal interphalangeal joints. Swelling of three or more joints for six weeks symmetric joint swelling. The distribution is very important room in rheumatoid arthritis. The distribution is symmetric in rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis involves joints of both sides. If it is involving wrist of one side, it will also involve the wrist joint of the other side. The distribution is symmetric in rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid factor is positive or anti-citrullinated peptide is positive. One of these should be positive. We'll talk about these in a while in our investigations. C-reactive protein and ESR is also raised. Since it is an inflammatory condition, inflammatory markers will also be elevated like C-reactive protein, ESR will also be high. So you need four out of these six points for considering the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. This is a picture of a patient who's having rheumatoid arthritis. Look at the deformities, look at the destruction of the joint in rheumatoid arthritis. On examination, what you're going to see is you will see tender swollen joint with limited range of movement due to inflammation in the joints. You may be also able to appreciate Trigger finger. What is trigger finger? Trigger finger occurs due to tenosynovitis of the palms. Tenosynovitis is the inflammation of the tendons. Whenever there is inflammation of the tendons, the muscles attached to these tendons will also contract and that contraction of the muscle results in the finger that is bent and that finger cannot be pushed back due to contracted muscles. That is called as trigger finger. Rheumatoid nodules. Rheumatoid nodules are specially present on the elbows of the patient. Cervical joint involvement. 
whenever a patient a known patient of rheumatoid arthritis presents to you with the tingling of hand or with the back pain you must suspect cervical joint involvement because rheumatoid arthritis can cause destruction of the cervical joint and the destruction of cervical joint can result in spinal cord compression and spinal cord compression will result in pain in the neck and tingling in the arm due to compression of the nerve roots must remember that distal interphalangeal joints are spared in rheumatoid arthritis you may be also able to appreciate botanier's deformity what happens in botanier's deformity is that the proximal interphalangeal joint is flexed and the distal interphalangeal joint is extended pips are flexed and dips are extended in contrast to botanier's deformity there is another deformity called as swan neck deformity what happens in swan neck deformity is that the distal interphalangeal joint is flexed and the proximal interphalangeal joint is hyperextended this is called as swan neck deformity this is a picture showing swan neck deformity in which the proximal interphalangeal joint is hyper extended and distal interphalangeal joint is flexed this is a picture showing botanier's deformity in which proximal interphalangeal joints are flexed and distal interphalangeal joints are hyper extended what are the lab findings of rheumatoid arthritis in rheumatoid arthritis the most important test is anti ccp antibodies anti citrullinated peptide is the most specific and diagnostic test for rheumatoid arthritis high igm rheumatoid factor rheumatoid factor is not a specific test for Uh, rheumatoid arthritis although its name looks like that this test will be more specific to rheumatoid arthritis but rheumatoid factor is not specific it is a non specific test anti ccp is the diagnostic test for rheumatoid arthritis c reactive protein and esr will be elevated since rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammatory condition and esr and crp they tell us about the inflammatory condition so esr and crp will be elevated in rheumatoid arthritis and this correlates with the disease activity x ray of the affected joint can also be done this is an x ray of a lady who was later diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis this is a normal x ray of the hand joint with normal carpal bones 9 year later another x ray was performed when she developed rheumatoid arthritis and this was her condition look at the destruction of carpal bones destruction of joints that happened within this 9 years this is another x ray showing destruction of all the joints look at the joint destruction and deformation coming towards the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis rheumatoid arthritis treatment always begins with the first line drug first line drug is methotrexate methotrexate is a disease modifying anti rheumatic drug also called dmard if the patient is not getting better with methotrexate and patient is having persistent symptoms greater than 6 months with methotrexate treatment now you have to proceed forward in the treatment of this patient and you have two options first you can go for parallel therapy what you do is in parallel therapy is you add another dmard another non biologic agent from the family of methotrexate which are sulfasalazine and hydroxychloroquine or you have another option option of step up therapy what you do in step up therapy is you add a biologic agent to the treatment tnf inhibitors are biologic agents how tnf inhibitors work tnf is basically an inflammatory mediator that mediates the disease that causes rheumatoid arthritis tumor necrosis factor causes rheumatoid arthritis it is an inflammatory mediator what tnf inhibitors do is they bind tnf tumor necrosis factor and do not let it work so when you inhibit tnf you stop the disease progression so tnf inhibitors are used as a step up therapy
If your parallel therapy fails, you can directly go to step up therapy. What if the patient is still not getting better with the step up therapy with the biologic inhibitors like TNF inhibitors? You have to switch to alternate TNF inhibitor and you have to continue methotrexate with it. Alternate TNF inhibitors, there are three TNF inhibitors that are found to be effective in rheumatoid arthritis treatment. These are infliximab, adalimumab, and etanercept. Before starting t- uh, treatment with the TNF inhibitors, you must always rule out TB because if the patient is having latent TB, TNF inhibitor can cause reactivation of TB. Methotrexate has a side effect that is it causes hepatitis. So you have to check CBC and LFTs, liver function tests, four to eight weekly. In summary, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disorder that causes destruction of the joint, mainly found in females associated with smoking. Out of the six, you need four points for the diagnosis. It always spares the dips joint and it also causes boutonnieres and swan neck deformity. In the lab findings, NTCCP is the diagnostic test. Rheumatoid factor is not as specific. This is the swan neck deformity. This is the swan neck deformity. And this is Botanier's deformity. And this is the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, starting from methotrexate, switching to parallel therapy, or directly going for step-up therapy in which you add biologic agent like TNF inhibitor. If the patient is not responding, you switch to alternate TNF inhibitor with methotrexate. So this was rheumatoid arthritis. If you liked my video, please click the subscribe button and check out my other videos on rheumatology. Thank you very much.